Hi, everybody. It's Salesforce Jen, and I wanted to do a little bit of a dive into Experience Cloud guest user permissions or the guest user profile. This is my portfolio, and when you create an Experience Cloud site, it'll automatically create a guest user. A guest user is an unauthenticated user. That's people that do not have to log in to interact with your site. Anybody could land on this page. And there are many models where you want this. I want this because this is my portfolio and I want anybody to be able to use it. I have it available for guest users. And I wanted to show you how that worked and what you need to do to set that up. I've already logged into my org and I went to all site. You can see if you type in all sites here or use an extension like I do, the Salesforce Y extension already has that for me. I have my portfolio here. Now you do need to be familiar with Experience Cloud. If you have not worked with it, I do have a video series where you can create your own portfolio or Experience Cloud site step-by-step. -step. So you can go find that in my playlist. I have gone to the site, which is my portfolio. I am going to click on workspaces, and then I want to go to admin settings. There's a couple things you need to do. As you are working on this, once you want to make it available, make sure your site is active. If it's not, you would hit a button here to activate it. If we look at preferences, there is one thing that's very important that if I want guest users or people that are not logged into my site to see it, then you need to make sure this box is checked. It's under admin settings and I go to preferences in the menu on the top left, and it's under the category called general. It is the fourth one down. You want to enable that. And then after you did that, you're going to hit save. The second thing I need to do is where it says administration, I can click that and go into the menu where it says builder. The builder is the back end of Experience Cloud where you do a lot of your work. If I go to the left side here, there's a cog that says settings. I want to click on that. I must check right here, public access. Guest users can see and interact with the site without logging in. You must have that checked for it to work. Anytime you make an Experience Cloud site, it will create a guest user profile. We'll get into that in just a moment. The other thing that you need to know is if you are making a navigation menu, which is a navigation menu here. This is a navigation menu where people can move around on your site that if they are guest users, you also have to go another step. If I was going to work on this navigation menu, which I clicked, it gave me an option on the right side, a little window came open and I can hit edit main navigation. Anything I add in my menu, I've got to mark public if I want the public to see it. If I want them to be able to see certifications, I have to have this box right here publicly available. There are instances where you may have some items public or you may have some items if somewhere to log in. If I had created this as a hybrid site and I let some people log in, I could keep some of these hidden. Say I don't want someone to see my work history, I would keep that box unchecked. So the people that visit the site see one experience and a user might see an extended experience. Just remember on any kind of menu items, you will have to publicly make each item available. Another way to get that is the settings cog on the left. If you click it, you go to navigation. All your navigation menus are listed there because they're used in different places on your site. Make sure anything you want them to see is made publicly available. If you happen to publish a site and there's something you can't see, you want to go check those things. Now that we are in settings, we stay here. We go down to general and the publish status. Since I do have it published, this is my URL right here. But right under that, the guest user profile is right here. There is only one way to get to a guest user profile, and that is on this builder page. If I were to go to profiles in my setup menu, I would not see that. If we click on this, it'll take us there. And I want you to notice the first thing is the license that it uses has already been assigned right up here at the top. It says user license, guest user license. That is automatic and it is taken care of. Now I have the enhanced user layouts. So mine might look a little different than yours, but it's essentially the same. You're going to go in and give access to 
objects or whatever you want them to see or not see. The first thing I want to look is object settings. I'm going to click on that. And what's very important is you're not giving your guest user access to your objects. There are some use cases where you might expose information, but for the most part, you don't. These are all your objects on the left. The API names are next. The permissions, no access. That's really what you want. Most of these tabs you want hidden. That's the first thing you're going to do. It's already set up where it shouldn't give anybody permissions, but you want to make sure that it does that. One thing that you always need to do for your guest user profile is give them access to documents. If I don't have access to documents, they cannot see these images in the menu. I'm going to find the object here in this org. I've already given them read access, which is what you want to do. And then you want to take the tab and do default on. If for some reason you don't have access, you just click on documents. That is the object name and you can do it here. You can edit it. Another object that you might give them access to would be Salesforce um, Knowledge. There's an object called Knowledge. If you set up Salesforce Knowledge, that object is in your org and it would be in your object list. And you would give them read access because if you want them to read your articles, you've got to give them access. Depending on what you're doing, it's set up the same. Then you'll want to make sure that you check your system permissions. I'm gonna go back to system permissions. Generally, you don't want to give them any of these permissions, but there are cases where you do. There's an API enabled right here. We generally don't give that out. It's very discouraged or best practice unless you have specific APIs that need to give the external guest user access to Salesforce data. If you were to enable chatter and let them chat back and forth, then you would have that. For now, you don't need to worry about that. Something I want to check is this flow access. This give them permission to access any flows. When you create a screen flow, you can give access to a guest user. So you want them to create a record but not see anything. And in my org, I already have one called contact me. If I didn't want them to have access, I could remove that. If I hit edit here, any flows that I have that are available to my users that I have set up will be in available flows and I move it over here. I no longer use that. So I'm going to remove that flow. They don't need it. But if they did, then you would give it to them there. You also have default external access. You should normally keep all of that private or no access at all. Private is best practice because then if you do accidentally expose anything, they can only see something they created. Guest users cannot create or be owners of records. So you won't have that problem. I'm going to change the, and also I will show you down here too. I had a sharing rule that they could, if I own the record, they could see their own contact record. But right now I don't want that. And just to show you, if I created a sharing rule down here, you would hit new. And if it involves the guest user and they're allowed to get access to it, then you can have it right here. Maybe you want to share records with guest users together. But you want to be very, very careful when you do that because you could expose information that you don't want to. If you notice here, I only have availability to give read access to guest users. If you were ever to create a sharing rule, it will only let you give them the amount of access you're allowed to give. Some things like uh, if I go to account, I will see the guest user sharing rule where I could set it up there. And there are a few objects. If, if they don't allow it, you won't have that here. If it's not here, that's because the guest users are not allowed. I'm going to change some of my org-wide defaults and lock this down in my external access. I'm going to move everything to private, controlled by parent, private, 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 and product. Even though I don't have any, there really is no need to keep that open. And I want to make sure everything is under private. Operating hours, I don't have that set up, so I'm going to keep that private. It's best to keep everything um, private in your org. And actually, before I change this, I want to show you something that will quickly tell you what your guest user has access to. I'm going to go to my guest user sharing rule access report that's in your setup menu. Start typing guest, and then you can click under that. It wants me to pick a site. We'll say my portfolio, and it's going to give me a quick report. Now, I can see that I have given access, and this is what I was talking about. At one time, I let them access their contact record. 
The thing is, I never did go back and change that. So it's really important you run these reports because someone could accidentally get some access to the org. A document, I gave them that access. The other thing you need to know, content document and content version. I cannot go into org-wide defaults and adjust those. The reason my guest users have access to that is because I have a content management system. They have permission to see certain things on my site through my content. An example of that would be if I go to my work history, I'm using a CMS or a content management system to display an image, allow them to click more and display some information. There's different kinds of content management systems. I have one down here on the bottom. This is a content management system. That means I can display it in a different way. Somebody can click on it. In my particular org, the reason that they have access, the guest user sharing content document and content version is because that has to do with the CMS. Okay. There's nothing once I give them access to that, it's not like I'm going to go take it away. I would just remove it from the page. I do see that they have access to quite a few things right here, the user and the contact. I've opened orgs for clients that have thousands of things exposed where every single object was open and they didn't know it. I'm going to go back to my org wide settings and I am going to edit those. I'm just going to make everything private again. And that way I'm securing everything, whether I use it or not, or expose it, I don't want it to be accidentally accessed. I am going to, as a safety measure, make sure it's all private. I want to go down to this sharing set. I have to wait for this to complete, but I don't want this sharing set anymore where I was sharing with the guest user. You can see it right here. We're going to wait a minute and then we're going to go to that. Some things to know about guest users. A guest user cannot have an update or delete permissions on any object. Sometimes you can bypass that if you're doing a screen flow and it's running in system context, they might be able to update. And guest users can never have the view all or modify all access on object. There we go. And I want to get rid of that sharing rule. I'm going to hit delete because I do not need it anymore. You want to be very careful when you create guest user sharing rules because you need to consider the implications and the use cases. And you need to implement security controls based on the sensitivity of the data. When you do create a guest user rule, it is based on criteria. Guests cannot be in a queue or a group and you can't manually share a record with a guest. And that's good to keep things secure. Guest users cannot be an owner of a record and they cannot be given ownership of any record. If you are setting up web to case, you can do that. But when a, when a guest user creates a case using web to case, the case owner is set as the site guest user. What you'll need to do is set up an assignment rule to trigger some kind of process or flow to change the record owner to a different user or a queue in the org. Because if the guest user remains the case owner, anybody who has guest user access is going to see that record. I want to take one more rundown and look through the settings to make sure everything looks good. I've looked at system permissions. Login hours does not apply. After you have everything in place, again, your site has to be active. Sometimes people create it and then they go to their site and nobody can see anything. That's because you haven't activated your site. Make sure you do all of those things and check out my other videos if you have more questions.